Hi everybody, this is Scott Snyder from Sundial Technologies. This is another installment of my developer discussion video series. And uh, it's been quite a while since I've uh, done one of these, a few months, so I'd like to catch everybody up on what progress we've made. I'm going to go ahead and do this video in four parts. The first part is going to be on segment groups and agent logins. The second part is going to be on importing and exporting. The third part is going to be on some general user interface uh, enhancements. And the fourth part is going to be about inbound. So first I'm going to talk about segment setup. Now the latest feature that I've written for segmentation is called segment grouping. Now I mentioned this in a previous video, but as you can probably see the user interface has changed quite a bit. I've simplified it to make sure that it works a lot smoother. So what we have here is we have the segment groups on the top for example morning and afternoon I have two separate groups and at the bottom we have the segments that are in the group. So let me look at morning for example. In the morning we have all of our lines attributed to the main segment and then we always need a remote agent line segment and this is what gives the audio uh, to the agent station so every segment group has to have a remote line segment that contains all of the station channels the segment channels always start after the the last agent channel here so if I look at here at I can go plus and minus to cycle through the segment groups if I look at the afternoon segment you can see I still have my remote segment but then I've split the phone lines into socks and underwear and yes I do have clients that sell socks and underwear if you see right here the default group for the engine you can see it's set for afternoon let me show the actual uh, classic dialer engine interface for a second so you can see what's going on okay So if you look at the dialer engine interface with segment grouping, uh, the segment group feature installed, you'll see that on the bottom, besides seeing the segment, you can see it shows you the segment groups so of the afternoon. Now you can change segment groups, but everybody has to be logged out at the time or else it'll mess up everything. Let me make this screen a little bit wider here. This is the classic dialer engine screen. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to the morning segment group and I'm going to say apply group to dialer engine line setup doesn't exist okay so it warned me I never set up the line setup so here we have remote line segment the first one and then we have after that we have the the rest of the lines for the main segment so I'll go ahead and I'll put I'll set two of these lines for inbound for example and I'll set one for virtual phone I'll save it now I know it's there, I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And you see we're still running the afternoon segment group. I'm going to apply it. And stop all lines dialing. This is, uh, these are kind of beta, but it's going to be important. And let's set this for the default group. So when the engine restarts the next day, it will go ahead and load this one. I'll say apply. And you can see the engine went all crazy here. And now you have the morning group loaded with the main segment and you can see here's my line setup attached to it I'm gonna go back and I'm going to apply the afternoon group and let's see cycle through it, it still says morning group is that a bug? let's try it again apply there we go I guess it is a bug one of the good things that happens when I make these videos actually today's Sunday I started this yesterday on Saturday and what happened is as I started working on the video itself I found little annoying bugs and interface changes so typically I do a, a dry run through these videos and then I go ahead and record them like I'm showing you now now once you have segment groups set up you can go in and you can actually edit the segment groups and you can change the line allocation right there you can change the normal settings that we have 
you can set the initial speed settings. Once these are set, these this is what's initially loaded, but you can change them live. And then the text to speech setup if this feature is installed. This is uh, a feature that is in use for collection agencies to prompt them with, uh, hello, this is an important call for Scott Snyder. If this is Scott Snyder, please stay on the line. If not, hang up, and so on. So if we go back to the basic info here, you'll see at the bottom where normally you'd see stations. It says stations assigned to segments by login. This is a new feature. And what that allows you to do is you can allocate, set up the line setup, I mean the line allocation, and you have that set up statically. And then you can set up the agent logins. You can by agent login you can assign a segment. So choose Alex use and I'll put them in the underwear segment. If you see down here I have myself in the sock segment and this other login that I use called stress which is for stress testing I have it in the main segment. Now if that segment groups not loaded and somebody tries to log in it just simply won't let them log in to a segment that doesn't is not currently running. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring up the dialer status screen. Again this is the remote admin that I'm in so it looks a little bit different than the than the actual um, dialer engine screen. The dialer engine screen is still here in the background running. But this is what they'll see on the remote admin. Now I'm going to log in using our newer .NET agent. And this is a custom agent written specifically for a client. Um, in the process of incorporating some of these features along with a new scripting. And I'm going to release this to uh, the general population at some point. But I'll go ahead and log myself in as Scott and you'll see I was assigned to the sock segment and now I'm there and I'm paused and if I unpause myself I'm at be ready and I can start some lines dialing now by default the lines the clicking of the individual lines is disabled for the remote admin that's just to prevent multiple managers from undoing each other's clicks and there we got to connect and this is uh, our uh, our custom scripting with this is rich text right here rich text and this is a, a custom order entry screen and a, a custom customer information screen. We also have an alert down here that pops up you know, in front of everything. Uh, and that shows you that a call is received. These are called script parts. And what I'm in the process of doing is uh, making the beta script generator, HTML script generator, uh, allow us to create custom forms that we'll be able to put into these script parts. So instead of having an order entry screen, we might have a custom form and so on. Um, go ahead and say done, and I'll skip it, and it should be back to available. And let me pause that for a second. Now you notice after I hit skip, you saw that there was a delay between the connected and available, and that's actually in intentional. There's uh, in some of the m most recent versions over the last year. I forgot when I actually instituted it, but I actually put a pause in between uh, when the agent hits the done message uh, between the time they go back into the available queue, because what that does is that actually gives the phone line a chance to release properly and avoid any potential synchronization errors. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you is some enhancements to the importing leads procedure. Uh, the remote ad, you can import leads in the remote admin as you did in the past on these, using the Sundial query. And the Sundial query used uh, text-based map files to map the data to the file format. This uses table-based mapping. And you can see, you can set, set up the field order and so on, or you can skip a field if need be. It puts the blank skip right there and so on. And then when you go to import it you can go ahead and choose the import map and so on. You can also on the custom scripting module and I'm going to eventually institute this for the general public well, you'll be able to assign the script name which is equivalent to the camp HTML on the legacy Sundial agent. So when you import leads you can create a campaign choose the import map and actually assign it to the script right there. BAM! I think that's pretty cool. You can also choose uh, comma or semicolon for my mutant international clients. Uh, and we can also 
is, is another new beta feature that I'm working on. If you have multiple files and you want to uh, import them more than one at once and they're all using the same map in the same format, you can go ahead and click on multiple files and you can choose the files which I don't have any right now but it'll, they'll add to the list right here and then when you go to import the records it'll say multiple files in there and it'll import them one at a time and show you which has been which were imported and the counts in importing I've also clarified some of the terminal terminology when it comes to importing lists and overriding existing data um, a lot of you may know that there's two ways to index the Sundial leads table the standard method is indexing it by whole phone number only and whole phone number only will make it so you have you can only have one of each phone number in the entire database however a lot of people uh, a lot of my clients will call for multiple companies and they might need to sell them say insurance and they might need to also sell them a mortgage and they might need to also sell them underwear so if that's if, if that's the case then you can uh, it's indexed by campaign and whole phone number so depending on the type of indexing uh, the database is set up for you might want to say refresh a list with an uh, with new data and overwrite existing data and uh, you have these two options here one is to don't overwrite any sales not interested or do not call statuses that means people you just sold to you're not gonna reset their their call status back to zero and call them again and bug them because they might cancel the sale or get mad at you or something or you can just say overwrite any call status so these are the replace options if you don't check these then if you're importing them into the same campaign and it's multi campaign indexed you'll see them as duplicates if you're indexed just by whole phone number only then it will also you'll see them as duplicates it'll be blocked out if they exist in any campaign if you're overwriting them here at all you'll see them as replaced one other important thing that I forgot to mention is normally you can only import leads from comma delimited or semicolon delimited text files but now you can actually import directly from Excel files so you have that option but there is an external dependency that I may have to install if uh, Office is not installed on the PC with the remote admin, but that's no big deal and I can give you that at the time. Next I want to show you another new feature called our export package feature. And uh, this was I also mentioned this in a previous video, but I wanted to just go, go through it real quick. Um, the export package feature basically lets you set up exports, like say you export uh, orders on a daily basis and send them to a corporate office you can go ahead you can create the export package and tell it exactly what the SQL is going to be now this is going to this is very basic but there could be you know a lot more uh, criteria in there tell it which file name to go to if you have auto date checked it'll automatically add the date to the export file here's the path where it's going to go and let's see preview there's no data here and this would be the export log so this actually will create a, a there's no data right now but if I had done some exports, there'd be a log of every export that you've done. So if you're not sure whether you exported the data or not, you can check. Next, I'd like to talk about a few uh, user interface updates that we've done here. Here on the dialer engine status, you'll see again we have the phone lines and the stations as on the classic dialer engine interface. But also you can see that there's been an updated statistics grid and that actually will show you uh, the, the, the percentages and the counts of each statistic and also down at the bottom we have some inbound statistics and I'll show you that uh, in the last section we have another inbound summary screen to show you what's going on now, this is the line status or the dialer status typically called here's the station status grid and this will just show you all the stations when they're logged in and what they're doing but one thing that we've added here is the total stations logged in count and the stations logged into the current segment so you can see one it says I'm absent so again here's an example of a bug that I found while doing the video very nice also I may have mentioned this before but on the Sundial Live Lead Selector within the remote admin 
you have the ability to only sh if you have a long campaign list you can say I want to show campaign started starting only with S for example and it'll show you that I actually did the same thing I forgot to mention in the agent setup where you can say show login starting with say S and it'll show you that okay so the last thing I'd like to talk to you about in this uh, video today is about our inbound blending feature now this is our inbound setup screen which is found from this icon here and this actually sets up the call flow to show you what happens when a uh, when a call is answered and how it progresses through the system now, this is actually set up for a uh, customer service application at a client in Poland here and you can see I have a uh, I have an English introduction that's set up when the, when the uh, call is answered that's for testing but one of uh, and it and then they uh, they get one digit whether it's one two three four and five they're prompted to pick whether they want a uh, sales or uh, an invoice question or a new order or actually I forgot what these completely mean but based on the functionality it will set the campaign uh, to one of these options and then when they receive the call on the screen it will pop the appropriate script attached to these campaigns so this way you can have a customer service department that handles different you know applications and they get they get their own script so they know that somebody's calling you know to cancel a subscription or to add a new subscription or so on uh, once they set the campaign it's it's the call is queued and then it plays please hold for the next available agent please continue to hold and so on you have you have the option to set the number of repeats and the uh, number of milliseconds between prompts also the prompt repeats uh, when uh, if nobody if there's no agents available at some point it will eventually go and it'll prompt them to record a voicemail and it'll hang up now in inbound you can set up inbound manually by setting up these these uh, events and the states and how they're handled the actions that are taken but we also have a new inbound wizard that's created and you can actually say I want to start a new inbound project and I want to have it set up the starter events and actions which sets up the basic flow or you can copy from uh, an existing inbound flow from an existing DNS and add, give it a new campaign name and a new DNS. This is like a master campaign. So for example if somebody calls on a number ending in 999 this DNS it's going to attach it to this campaign which is attached to, if I go to one on one here, let's see, I'm having trouble with my mouse here, not moving. Let's try this. And, and this is the flow for, for this, for this one. Looks like my mouse has run out of batteries. I guess I'll use the one on the keypad. Um, some options that we have on inbound, one of the, the newest things that we've added is, well, let me go back to the inbound parameters table you can see here we have the ability to set up DNS priorities so if you have calls that come in on multiple multiple DNS's for different projects you can say which one gets answered first by agents you can also set up the priorities by agent also so you can say I want to have the agent with login Scott for this DNS be priority one and then we might have another agent let's see Let's go agent one, and for this DNS 999, he'll be priority two. So that means I'll get the call before agent one. Now these these, these can be used. Uh, these these DNS priority and the agent priority can be used um, in conjunction with each other. So say a call comes in on a priority one DNS, that's going to get the that's going to uh, get handled first and it's going to be handled by the agent who is top priority for that DNS. The next new feature for inbound that I've added recently is this inbound queues or inbound summary screen and this will actually show you the first call time of the day here's the current segment the current dialer the total inbound calls how many were sent to the agents how many were went on hook meaning the customer hung up during the greeting, how many hung up during in, uh, while they were in queue, uh, voicemail, or some other state that we didn't we're not handling specifically. And then here is our average agent wait time, the call time, the queue time, talk time, and the wrap time. 
and here's the call history for the last current most 50 calls when the calls are in queue they actually show up in this box right here so you'll see the call came in at what time which phone line is it on which campaign which Dennis the Annie which is where they called from and what priority the call is that's about it on the inbound features there's probably a lot more that I can I can go into and talk about it uh, most of the inbound campaigns I set up custom uh, for customers based on the application so there's really that there's really an, pretty much an infinite amount that could be done anything that could be done in any standard IVR system can be done at this point with this system I just have to understand how you're running your business and then I can advise you the proper way to set it up anyway um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching please email me feedback questions comments ideas as usual bye